It's been a long time since the cappuccino was fashionable. We go to one of those uh, cappuccino places. Cappuccino. F forget the cappuccino. But it is undeniably one of the greatest and most popular coffee recipes. There's a lot of confusion and myth about where the name comes from. It is connected to the Capuchin monks, an order of Franciscan monks founded in 1525 by Matteo de Baccio. He felt his fellow Franciscans weren't taking the teachings of St. Francis of Assisi quite seriously enough. They weren't living a life of austerity, a life without possessions. His superiors tried to suppress him, and so he and his followers went into hiding, given refuge by the Camal de Lazy monks. As gratitude, they adopted their host's practice of wearing a hood as part of their habit, and the Italian word for hood, cappuccio, is what would give rise to the popular name for this new order. When it comes to the drink, some claim that the layer of foam acts as a kind of hood. Others claim that it is called a cappuccino because, when poured just right, it can look like a monk-shaped head. Neither of these are true, and capuchin monks don't even perform tonsure, the act of shaving the head. The truth takes us to an unexpected place, outside of Italy. While we see the cappuccino as a quintessentially Italian drink, the name actually comes from the iconic coffee houses of Vienna in the 19th century. There you could find a drink called the cappuccina, named because the recipe mixed coffee with milk or cream until the colour matched that of the capuchin monk's robes. It was a way of using colour to indicate how strong or how milky you wanted your coffee. The drink predates any form of espresso machine, which would eventually come to provide the steam necessary to create foamed milk. Now the drink would eventually make its way to Italy, but it was with the invention of high pressure espresso machines that it began to transform into the drink that we know today, and along with espresso, spread around the world. So what, exactly, is a cappuccino? Most often you hear it described as following a rule of thirds, one part espresso, one part milk, one part foam. This seems neat and easy, but it isn't particularly accurate. Otherwise, a single-shot cappuccino would only be about 3 ounces, or 90 mils. In Italy, and for a long time in most of the world, a cappuccino was a single-shot drink in a 5 or 6 ounce cup. And the cup was then filled with foamy milk, but there weren't really hard rules for how much foam it should be. The rise of modern coffee has seen the cappuccino become a stronger drink, usually with two shots of espresso. Sadly, that has often been accompanied by a reduction in the amount of foam, especially as latte art has become more popular. Latte art is more difficult with foamier milk. And so, the drink as a whole is much more of an idea than a strict recipe. There is one more contentious aspect to the cappuccino, the addition of chocolate. There are some claims that this is actually a very old practice. Uh, shavings of chocolate were there to cover the hole left by pouring coffee into boiled foamed milk. Ultimately, like most aspects of the cappuccino, it's about preference. If it brings you delight, then go for it. In summary, the cappuccino is really about two things. Having plenty of coffee flavour, and having a thick layer of foam. Foam that ideally has bubbles so small that you can't see them. I love the taste of it, I love the smell of it, I even love the sound of it. Cappuccino.